this is how I'm cleaning out my tank. Just give it a, a replacement once a month. I'm just turning the, the pump out into the, into the wheelbarrow and I'll fill it up with fresh water and nutrients. I do that on a, on a monthly basis just to make sure nothing untoward's growing in the barrel and just to make sure that uh, the water's clean for the hydroponics. So this is uh, the pump outside of the uh, existing uh, system. So this an, it's an EP548 and that's basically what I'm going to get for the other uh, system. It's a 60 watt uh, pump. It was about $30 and you can see here that what happens is there, there's a pipe that runs up here and across that goes into the into the other side. So this is the res reservoir. I've just cleaned this one out and replaced the water which should be done on a monthly basis. I don't worry about measuring, being precise or scientific about pHs but just make sure you replace it once a month and that just about does it for the volume of water that you're using um, and what happens is it runs across and I reconnect it to this pipe here uh, so that it runs through the snake and waters everything. So uh, this will basically be a, a similar setup to what I have before. I've, I've still got some thought to do around how I can more easily replace the water. I probably want to make a stand that sits um, beside beside the water tanks here to hold all of the water up so I can easily slide this tank out. But what I did initially there was just to pump all of the water out into a wheelbarrow which made things a bit easier because clearly you can't move the, the wheelbarrow over the lip of the, the greenhouse there when it's half full of water. So other than that it seems to be uh, progressing quite well. A few more ideas to implement I think to make things a bit easier. So you might ask, uh, what is the controller I'm using to um, time the flood and ebb? Effectively this is just a little cheapy Wi-Fi smart outlet that you can buy from, from Bunnings. And it just uh, basically it allows you to program during the day how many times you want it to turn on and off. And I time it for about 2 or 3 minutes, which is equivalent to uh, the amount of time the 60 watt pump takes to uh, fully uh, flood the, the 90 millimeter. PVC plumbing. It was a bit of uh, trial and error rather than exact calculation to see how much went through. Um, but basically you don't want it over, overflowing and flooding too much and once it gets to that stage it just trickles out as you can see from the little uh, flow constrictor that I've got at the end of the setup. So this works quite well. It just talks to my home network and I can remotely control it and uh, turn it on and off manually but generally it runs uh, two minutes in the morning and over over winter I'll probably crank uh, over summer over the warmer months I'll crank up the schedule. So after emptying out the water you can see here that I'm now filling it full of um, clean water down there. You can see the, the bottom of the recess there. I'll add some um, uh, fertilizer, liquid fertilizer afterwards which will turn a little bit brown um, and affect the clarity of the water. But as you can see here, this will be ready to go once I've um, replenished the water. This is running out of a, a tank water collection system that I have next to my house. Um, and I'll reconnect it and uh, test it. So you can see here what happens to the hydroponic system if I don't put the elbow and the flow constrictor on the very end. The water just flows out at the back and it doesn't, it doesn't um, flood the chamber to water everything. So in terms of my plants, you can see here that I've planted some uh, iceberg lettuce which is growing quite nicely and uh, some of my seedlings which I originally had in pots weren't uh, giving me any decent strawberry yield. Uh, I've really only had these in the pots for maybe a month now and you can see that it's it's really starting to flower and blossom. I'm really hoping to get some uh, nice strawberries. The only concern I have is the pollination whether or not the it needs a bit more wind in here but I do actually have the greenhouse open so it would get some wind through. So uh, we'll see how we go in a few weeks time, whether I've, or not I've got a, a large amount of red berries hanging off this system. Right, so I've connected it all back up now. Um, previously I had some glad wrap on the top, but now I've put some nice clean caps uh, to finish off the T-junction so that the water does come out. Uh, and what I've done, you'll see here that the water is no longer clear, and that's because I've put my liquid fertiliser in there to make sure that my uh, strawberry, strawberries get a good feed. So I've just turned the pump on to make sure that everything's running nicely. The cap there, the water's not leaking out the, the tops where I've placed the, the caps. You can see here that the water's flowing through here. It's making its way through the through the system. And then it comes out here. You can see here, this is I'll just take one of the pots out and you can see what's happening here is that the water's it takes about two or three minutes for the entire chamber to flood. 
Um, and what I've got here is a, a little, uh, it's a cap with just a hole in it and constricts the, the water from flowing out immediately. Um, and what happens, it will fill up and then over about a few minutes it just eventually drains out. So this is where the flood and ebb type arrangement comes in. You see here that um, the brown water, which is now the, the power feed uh, mixture, is uh, gradually rising against that brown mark on the left hand side. So I'll normally run the system for about two or three minutes and at, at which stage uh, I stop it and just let it drain out. So that allows everything to flood without it overflowing from the tops of the, of the chambers.